Well, you guys got another troubleshooting video here for you on how to uh, troubleshoot a PC that don't power on. So whether you've got uh, a brand new computer like this one or whether you've got an older system, then I'm going to take you through some of the steps here to try and work out why this system don't power on. OK, so if you've got a dead PC, this is the video for you. Now, this is quite a common thing. People build brand new PCs and uh, they just won't power on. And uh, it's quite... Um, daunting for some people but it is pretty straightforward and I'm going to show you sort of five things that you can really sort of uh, work out what's going on with the system so first off let's start with the most obvious which is power power going to the actual computer what is the power like is it good clean power is it working so we've got a kettle lead here which is what we call these in the UK because they use them on kettles uh, which you boil your water up for cups of tea but basically these are pretty cheap and affordable. Now you can either replace this and find out whether it is this, or you can test it with a multimeter. Now, if you are playing with electricity, I take no responsibility in what you're doing. You do this at your own risk. Electric is very dangerous. And if you do uh, play with electricity and you don't know what you're doing, you can get a serious uh, electrical shock or even fatal electrical shock. So please don't, uh, play with stuff that you don't understand so with that uh, safety caution out the way what we're going to do here is use a multimeter so multimeters are pretty straightforward this one has many different features the same as probably what you've got uh, this one is a simple one where I can put it on live and I can see whether this cable is live pretty straightforward and easy to do all I need to do is get the prongs and again, if you are not familiar with electronics or electrics, then do not play with things like this because it is pretty dangerous. So you're going to put this into the neutral, the black into the neutral here. And the red one is the live. And you can hear that already telling me that there is a live connection here. As you can see, it's warning me because it's telling me that is a live cable. And if I touch that with my fingers inside there, you're going to get electric shock. So don't do that. So as you can see here, we do have live feed coming from there. So now we know that that is OK. We know the cable is good. So we know there's good clean power coming from there. You can also te test for the amount of uh, volts that are coming out here, whether it be uh, volts for the UK or America. You can test the voltage on there as well to see whether you have got the right correct voltage from there. So we know the cable's good and we're going to move on to the next thing which is your power supply. Unfortunately the power supply is in this shroud. I'm not going to strip it all down just to test so I'll show you with another power supply but this is what you need to do okay. Okay so we have a power supply here now what we need to do is tell whether this power supply is working whether it's given us power to the computer. Now this is not to test the power supply for load and whether the power supply is bad that's another video but basically we just need to find out whether this is actually powering on and whether it's working you can do that with a simple clip like this jump in the uh, the two wires the uh, black ground wire and the green um, wire on there as well on the end of the 24 pin here let me just show you you should see green and black here now if you've got one of these types of power supplies you will be able to see this and again if you've got something like this it might be a bit more difficult because it's all black and you won't know what's what so you just need to get the right um, colors now you can use something like this paper clip with a, a cover around it to stop you uh, touching this is made of zinc this and uh, what we're going to do here is just put this into the correct ones which is black and green any black will do once you've got that you can push this right in like so and that will be enough to turn this on and see whether it powers on so what you're looking for here is to power this on and you can now see we do have it coming on so it means this is working it isn't testing a load and seeing whether this is failed in any way shape or form it's just telling us that the actual it is powered on so we know this is not the problem so if I want to test this for 12 volts and other voltages like 3.4 you can use these cables there's a chart on the screen right now as you can see and it tells me that uh, the orange one here 
is 3.4 and the yellow ones are 12 volts and so on and so on these different colors here so all I need to do is put the black prong into the black on here now be very careful you don't know what you're doing here leave well alone leave this professionals to do because you can electrocute yourself and also harm the hardware as well so always seek a professional uh, advice when you're doing things like this um, but basically I can put this into the black one here and I can then go across to the next one which is let me just get this into shot here and this should tell me that we've got 3.4 there we go so we've got 3.4 on there volts going through and I can then check the next one next one which is 12 volts and so on and so on I can tell that we are getting the right correct voltage through here I'm not going to go all the way through but basically you get the general idea what you can do which is probably better for you is to use something like a, a, a a tester and you can use something like this now again this is not going to test the power supply to see if it's bad it just tells you that you've got current going through here and it's working correctly get this around the right way and push in and now we've got this going through here so you can see here we've got 3.3 volts minus 12 volts PG which is powers good and we've also got uh, the 5VSB plus 12 volt rail no minus 5 volt rail this power supply doesn't support it and also we've got plus 5 volts from here so we now know there is power and this is working that's all we need to do we're not testing to see whether this is bad this is not that type of video this is just to tell us that the power supply is powering on and it's giving us the proper voltage okay so back to the computer we now know that we're getting power from our cable and from the power supply inside here so the next thing you want to do is check uh, the 24 pin on here you want to make sure that this is pushed right away in on the actual board here you can test by putting your fingers at the back of the board and making sure that this is pushed all the way in this is another area where people make mistakes it's not pushed all the way home and of course you're not getting power to the board the next area is the CPU uh, cable which goes up the top left hand corner up here let me try and get a shot of that for you if I show you up the top here you can see up the top left hand corner we do have that CPU connector here okay so we know that that is pushed all the way in that has to be in otherwise you will not get the PC powering on that is for the CPU the power okay and that's on your power supply so the next power area which you want to check is you want to check the power button on the case you'll have your power button here and if this is not working correctly obviously the computer won't power on now if you bought a, a brand new case maybe the power button is faulty and if this is faulty then it's not going to power on when you wire everything up properly and you push this button you'll get no um, signal to tell the PC to power on so basically that's not going to work you need to uh, bypass this to make sure that that is not the fault and the way you can do that is by using a little cable and I'll show you that right now okay so I've seemed to have uh, misplaced my cable which I've got which has a micro switch on it and basically it's just one of these cables here you see this is the power switch cable that goes to the motherboard from the front of the power switch on the case it says power SW on it which is power switch it's just one of those with a micro uh, switch on the end of it I'll show you that on the screen right now I'll leave the link in the video description so you can get them you just plug that into the power switch and click in it will tell you whether the actual power switch on the case is fouled or whether it's just uh, some other issue but you can see here I've replaced the or removed the uh, power switch from the motherboard here so that would not power on anyway but you can jump of these with a screwdriver if you don't have that and let me just show you how to do that so here we have the uh, jumper I've removed the switch from there and you can jump of these with a screwdriver and this will be able to bypass the switch on the case there now if you're using one of them cables which you can see on the screen right now 
this will do the same thing but obviously you're not using a screwdriver you're using a micro switch connected to this area here and when I jump at these two you should get power on like that and you can see it's now powered on so we know it's it could possibly be the switch if that happens and that's how you can quickly diagnose that now if I remove this switch here the cable and then we go to the top of the case and try to push the power switch you'll find the computer won't come on and the reason for that is because the power switch cables off for the case and if you haven't wired this up correctly it's not going to power on the computer so that's normally a way of detecting that problem now for older computers uh, this is another key area to check which is your CMOS battery this continues to hold all the information and if this is not working or the battery is dead or old or finished or, or uh, failing or something like that it won't work correctly you will need to replace this and I'll leave the image on the screen right now where you can get those on Amazon they're pretty cheap try and get the decent ones don't get the cheap Chinese ones get the real decent like Duracell or something like that and they will last you a long time you can only get them in a, a packet of four or five or something like that uh, or two whatever you want to do but just get one of those uh, to replace those okay so they're the main key areas for uh, power failure for PCs you've got your cable uh, which goes into the power supply you've got the power supply itself you've also got on older systems your CMOS if the CMOS is old you need to replace it you've got the connectors on the board here which go to the front uh, switch on the case and power uh, and everything like that you've got your 24 pin here which could not be seated properly it might need to be pushed home also if we tested the power supply and everything else you've got your CPU uh, going in here the CPU cable you can check that area there you've also got your switch which is here and it runs down to the board here I've shown you how to bypass that and jump of that it's very straightforward and easy to do after that if you're still having no power to there it could be DOA dead on arrival motherboard if it's a brand new system it could be fouled if it's an older system it could be bad hardware or something like that you need to diagnose and troubleshoot a lot further but they're the main key power while you're not getting power it's a quite a common thing to people to build their own PC and then they're not getting any sort of power to the PC and this is a very common uh, problem I just wanted to cover that in this video other than that, if you want to see more videos like this, then let me know in the comments section below. If you've got any other types of um, tips and tricks that you want to add, you can add them in the comments section or you can join our Discord server uh, for more uh, information on there and we can have a chat on there about it. Always interested to hear your points of view and what you've got to say about this sort of stuff. Anyway, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. I shall see you again for another video tomorrow. Bye for now. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the red subscribe button and then hit the bell notification button and click all to be notified when we upload new videos.